We have Robert Sokin, global economist at City, now joining us. And I think it's a absolutely appropriate day to speak with uh, Robert about what we've seen. Uh, Robert, uh, good morning. Uh, good to have you with us here. Prashant, this side. You know, some would say that it, the data are surprised, right? But we've, in the past, had a string of data points out of the U.S. which were all running hot. And the U.S. market was kind of reacting to them in a positive way. Uh, and many had started to ask the question whether, once again, good was, again, indeed good, uh, to be treated as good for equities as well. But last night, we saw this large reaction of the downside. What explains it? Yeah, it's a, it's a great point, and, and thanks so much for having me. I think what markets are really digesting now um, is whether um, we are actually going to have um, a soft landing or whether recession risk starts to come back uh, into play. You know, before um, uh, these recent data prints, um, it looked very much like we were getting a soft landing. Inflation was coming in low, uh, below expectations and close to target, and growth was surprising to the upside. Now we're getting this string of hotter inflation data, as well as a few signs of recession risk, such as stresses among lower income consumers, um, lengthening of duration of unemployment, and a few other weak uh, indicators. So I think markets are kind of trying to grapple with this, that maybe um, not only is inflation staying stickier than they thought, uh, but that recession risk is coming back uh, into play. I should note, though, that this is an extremely difficult time to judge the data. Um, Historically, this period early in the year, or the end of the year, are very volatile for seasonal adjustment issues, um, and those have gotten worse over time. So I think uh, those are the issues the markets are grappling with, but we're going to need a lot more data to kind of assess these forces because this is the noisiest time um, to be assessing data. Okay, this is the noisiest time to be assessing data, but this is also a time when things are getting a bit tricky, right? The equity markets, even in uh, markets like India, are starting to see some amount of correction. <laughs> now there are global headwinds as well. Do you think this is a good time to, for investors to be raising their cash levels, to be sitting on cash waiting to deploy in case the markets fall further? This is, this is a very challenging period to assess, as I mentioned, particularly given those issues around seasonality, data volatility, um, and um, uh, the signs I mentioned that some things are starting to slow down. So our base case for the global economy um, is this is going to be a year of a step down in global growth. We look for most major economies to slow around the world um, and for several major economies, including the U.S. later this year, to experience a recession. So I think last year was a year of upside surprises. We thought it would be a tough year for global growth. We ended up getting a year that was close to close to trend growth with uh, significant upside surprises in, in the U.S., but also a lot of other economies. Uh, I think that story is going to reverse this year. And so it is a time where um, investors need to be um, cautious and also ready to move uh, at a given moment, because it may also be that we could get that soft landing. You know, there's still that material risk. Uh, but our base case is uh, that things are going to start to slow down in coming months. Um, and in that environment, it's probably very good to be tactical. Hi, Robert. Good to see you. And as always, Nigel on this side. Uh, you know, Robert, first of all, you were bang on. I recall we had a chat a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about the Fed pricing in rate cuts from March, from May as well. You said, no, I don't think so. It's going to happen the second half of the year. Maybe earliest could be June, July. And that appears to be the scenario that's playing out. Tell us, what are you pricing in in terms of, uh, you know, rate action from the Fed? If they start cutting from the second half of the year, how many cuts and what quantum are you pricing in? Yeah, exactly. This is the real key issue. And going back to that conversation, you know, markets were really getting ahead of themselves, I think, by pricing in uh, much sooner uh, and potentially even more rate cuts than we think uh, are, are likely this year. Right now, our base case is for the first cut to come in June. Uh, but very importantly for that base case, as I mentioned, is that we have a recession happening in the U.S. around the middle of this year. And the recession kind of gives the Fed an excuse to cut rates uh, even more. And so we look for five total rate cuts this year of 25 basis points each, as I mentioned, starting in June. If, on the other hand, um, we do not get that recession, uh, I think what we're seeing potentially in the inflation data is that inflation may take longer to come back to target than we, than we had expected. It may be more stubborn in certain components than expected. 
And even if you're getting uh, growth that's continuing at a moderate pace, in that environment of a soft landing, the Fed is likely to cut rates even more cautiously, maybe even something like the three times that they signaled um, in their SEP forecast. So our base case, again, five cuts this year, starting in June, 25 basis points each. But you know you, you, the risks are, I think, that if you do get persistently more stubborn inflation, you don't get that recession, I think you'll probably get less cuts this year. All right. All right, uh, Robert, we'll leave it there. It's a great conversation. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, uh, one other thing this is not, of course, uh, the economy or macros, etc. The U.S. has not seen a correction. I mean, that's the other thing, right? The U.S. stock market, that is. Uh, the S&P has been rallying to a record. The Nasdaq's uh, come up uh, quite nicely. So here in India, I mean, the two, if you think about it, the two best uh, performing markets really have been the U.S. and uh, India for the last three years in a row. We've had small, very small corrections here in India, but nothing in the U.S. Uh, so that's uh, the other thing. Thanks very much for joining us here.